All of us probably watched science fiction films and wondered what aliens may look like. Many people imagine extraterrestrial life similar to us, carbon-based, but with a few biological differences. And others imagine it as something completely unlike humans. And so the famous author of The Laws of Robotics, science fiction writer Isaac Asimov, describes some forms of alien life as living stones that had a silicon-based chemical composition as opposed to carbon like us. But what if we told you that silicon-based life may not be entirely fictional? Today we will delve into our biology and try to answer whether the existence of silicon-based life is possible. Carbon is the basis of our life. Without it, it is possible that we would never have come to exist. It makes up about 18%, or 26 pounds of our total body weight, and performs a structural function, forming something akin to a carcass for the molecules and organic substances necessary for our life. Proteins, fats, carbohydrates, sugars, etc., even DNA. Moreover, as you may know, carbon plays an important role for many life forms around us, such as plants. With each breath out, we exhale carbon dioxide. This gas is required for plants for photosynthesis and the production of oxygen, as well as organic substances like glucose. CO2 is also the gas that traps heat in our atmosphere, which sustains all life on Earth. If it weren't for the harmful greenhouse effect, we would simply freeze. Aside from the value of carbon and its compounds in biology, it's important to mention the role it plays in manufacturing. Most of the things you see on a daily basis contain carbon. From clothes, medicine, your favorite cup of coffee, and the house you live in, to musical instruments played by your favorite musicians, and the phone or laptop on which you're watching this video. All of it couldn't exist. Of course, carbon is not the only component present in living organisms and all of the aforementioned items, but its chemical versatility and the ability to build huge chains with other elements makes carbon practically indispensable. According to astrobiologist Robert Hazen, a vital chemical element must be able to actively form bonds with other elements and not be too reactive at the same time, so as not to combust during these interactions. Furthermore, this element must form strong, long-term bonds and be able to store and transmit information. Carbon meets these criteria, therefore is superior among the most important building blocks on Earth and beyond. However, is carbon really the only possible foundation for life? What if it was simply a race from outer space? What element could then replace carbon? The possible answer can be found right under carbon in the periodic table, silicon. Silicon is one of the most common elements on Earth. Its core contains about 28% of its total mass. This element can be found in sand, amethyst, clay, granite, etc. Like carbon, silicon has a wide range of applications and is a valuable element in our life. Many processors in phones and computers use silicon as an accessible alternative. Silicon is also used to form conformable silicone compounds, which have applications in cosmetic and medical industries, ranging from hair conditioners to contact lenses as well as aviation and construction spheres, like in sealants and nonstick paint. So what role does silicon play in our biological life? According to researcher Milton Wainwright, it's likely that silicon may have had an effect on the emergence of life on Earth. According to his research, silicon that comes from outer space may stimulate bacteria growth, even if there's a lack of nutrients. The scientists therefore suggest that billions of years ago, during the birth of the solar system, comets containing silicon may have bombarded Earth, which caused the development of bacteria. In addition to its possible merits in the past, 
Silicon is also a very important component in plant development and growth. Silicon protects plants from external threats, both physical and chemical, making them more resistant. It also protects the plants from disease and prevents them from losing water. Moreover, silicon is important for healthy bone development and wound healing in humans and other animals. This element may also reduce the risk of Alzheimer's and cardiovascular disease. You could say that silicon, in fact, has an auxiliary effect on our lives. So why is it being considered as a likely alternative for carbon in alien life? First, it is due to their chemical similarity. There is a reason why silicon is located right under carbon in the periodic table. Each chemical element in the table can form a chemical bond, during which the electrons of each atom are combined. Silicon and carbon are both tetravalent, meaning they can bond to four atoms. As such, silicon can probably form long and strong bonds with different elements, similar to carbon. Secondly, in 2016, a team of scientists from the California Institute of Technology led by Francis Arnold were able to synthesize molecules that are made entirely of silicon and carbon. Furthermore, according to their study, E. coli could produce the protein that contained this compound. Scientists came to the conclusion that silicon-based life is possible outside of Earth. So, in order to answer the question of whether silicon could replace carbon, we must first consider what life is in biological terms and what are the criteria for it to occur. Scientist Norman Pace believes that life is the ability of an organism to replicate itself and to develop enough to overcome evolutionary hurdles. For example, developing the ability to grow organs required for movement in order to make travel across land easier. Therefore, the building blocks of this organism must be able to quickly adapt to new conditions. In addition to chemical complexity, a number of ecological criteria must be met for life as we now know it to emerge. In short, life requires oxygen, nitrogen, moderate temperatures, and water. Many compounds are highly soluble in water, such as salt, Therefore, previously separate parts of one compound can create new bonds with other elements. Carbon can form a long and stable framework for the living cells of water-based organisms. But can silicon also make connections necessary for life to exist? The short answer is no. So, what, that's it? Silicon-based life cannot possibly exist? Not quite. Because in addition to water, there are other solvents in which life can hypothetically originate. For example, scientists speculate that liquid ammonia, which is common on Jupiter and Pluto, could serve as an alternative to water. However, NH3 is highly toxic, which may prevent silicon-based life from developing, but scientists have yet to test this theory. In addition to liquid ammonia, another potential solvent is sulfuric acid, you may note that H2SO4 is generally capable of dissolving most metals without residue, and you'd be correct, but oddly enough, it's also possible for silicon to develop in it. Therefore, hypothetically, silicon-containing organisms can develop on planets with a sulfuric acid environment, such as Venus. Silicon can also exist in other cold solvents, like methane and ethane, which become liquid at low temperatures as they do on Titan, one of Saturn's moons. However, low temperatures greatly slow down any chemical processes and solubility. Although silicon would be able to quickly combine with other elements at low temperatures, silicon compounds would not be able to dissolve very quickly. Therefore, it would be very difficult for life to emerge in such conditions. But what about the structural function of silicon? Just like carbon, silicon can combine with elements essential for our existence, including nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and even many metals. However, silicon, 
is not as versatile and adaptable as carbon. In addition to the fact that silicon cannot develop in water, it will also not bond with anything at moderate temperatures between 32 and 212 degrees Fahrenheit. That means that silicon can only combine with other elements at excessively high or significantly low temperatures, which would make it very difficult for other elements to build bonds with silicon. Moreover, unlike carbon, silicon does not bond well with itself. And that is the bonds between two silicon atoms that would not be able to build a very large framework for cells. Think of a diamond. It's made entirely of carbon which shows the strength of the compounds the element is able to form. However, the one element that silicon likes to combine with is oxygen. And this further supports the theory that silicon-based life is unlikely. On Earth, silicon is almost always found in the form of SiO2, which is basically sand, making it very difficult to separate the two elements. This means that silicon is less versatile than carbon which forms equally strong bonds with other elements. Turns out that if we could swap carbon in our body for silicon, then instead of carbon dioxide, we would exhale sand. Aside from respiration, carbon also plays a very important role in our nutrition. Food is an excellent source of energy, which is why when we feel tired, there's nothing better than a good meal. However, our source of energy is not the food itself, but the compounds it contains, like glucose. As you may have already guessed, glucose is also made of carbon. What's more, when we don't have an opportunity to eat and we need energy, another carbon compound like starch can help us. It's deposited into the liver and used to replenish our supply of glucose when needed. However, these bonds would be unstable with silicon, which means they would not be able to properly support our life. While silicon is unlikely to replace carbon, it is possible for silicon-based life to evolve. However, it's highly doubtful that an organism that only contains silicon and no carbon in its chemical composition would be able to build complex chemical bonds. Silicon-based organisms have not yet been found on Earth, but as we've already mentioned, silicon is an important secondary component for many plants and animals. In some ways, it could probably be considered a part of ourselves. Furthermore, our ocean contains diatoms, a type of mysterious algae with cell walls made of transparent SiO2. This doesn't make this algae a silicon-based life form, but it does prove that silicon can indeed act as a building block of a living organism. As for other planets, according to a study by a team of scientists led by Ricardo Gobato, the ideal environment for the development of silicon-based life are the virtual absence of oxygen and water, temperatures above 428 degrees Fahrenheit or below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, atmospheric pressure much higher than on Earth, and a solvent like sulfuric acid or methane. Some of the planets in the solar system fit some or almost all of the criteria. For instance, Titan, the largest moon of Saturn and possibly Venus. Titan has a multitude of methane and ethane lakes as well as a nitrogen atmosphere, which are both excellent conditions for the origin of silicon-based life. The surface of Venus is very hot and subject to high pressure. However, the thing that makes Venus one of the candidates for silicon-based life are yellow clouds of sulfuric acid present on the planet. Hypothetically, silicon organisms could form in these clouds, although most likely even on Venus, a molecule like that would contain significantly more carbon than silicon due to the high content of carbon in the atmosphere. Surprisingly, another candidate for the formation of silicon-based life are hypothetical carbon planets. At the moment, scientists only know of one such exoplanet, 55 Cancri E, which is located 40 light years away from Earth. These planets likely form further from their parent star, which means they may have solvents suitable for silicon on their surface, and hypothetically, 
no water either. Moreover, it is possible that carbon planets are full of heavy hydrocarbons like butane, which may be suitable for silicon carbon bonding. However, silicon carbon compounds, silicon carbide, are very strong, which means their decomposition can take a lot of time and energy. So even if life begins to develop on a carbon planet, it will be a very long process. If we assume that silicon-based life has in fact existed for some time, then how would we recognize it? Sci-fi writers imagine a life form similar to living stones, like the authors of the Star Trek, for example. We are dealing with a silicon creature of the deep rocks. However, in reality, silicon-based life does not necessarily look like this. Since we are also not covered in diamonds and diatoms look nothing like stone, the fact of the matter is, scientists have no idea what a silicon-based life might look like. However, they assume that silicon-based life is unlikely to resemble us in chemical complexity or even intelligence, so we probably won't get to meet stone people. Such alien organisms would also be difficult to find if not technologically advanced because we simply would not know what molecules to look for. It is difficult for humans to imagine the possibility of life developing in conditions that are significantly different from those on Earth. The only life we've encountered so far is ourselves and the creatures surrounding us, which is why most missions sent into space focus on finding structures similar to our own. Right now, it's impossible for us to know if there is life made predominantly of silicon due to our scientific limitations. However, the cosmos is vast and diverse, so we cannot say for certain whether all alien life in billions of galaxies is carbon-based.